Hey guys, Funny Guy Timmy here for some game reviews, which I'm going to start doing on this channel. After I finish a long series, I'm going to go ahead and do a full game review that kind of sum up the experience. So if I do a, a series, it's going to be probably released on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then a Monday or Tuesday after the last video, I'll be posting a review. That's the plan anyway, just because I want to do some more unique content for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about Senua's Sacrifice. Now, Senua's Sacrifice, or Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, was actually a really, really good game. It had some flaws, and we're going to be covering both pros and cons, but I want to kind of take time on each one of these points. We're going to start with the good. Now, the first thing that I would like to say is that I was eagerly waiting to play and finish this game. I'd seen all kinds of content online talking about how they made it and the behind the scenes. And I, I'm a guy who likes that kind of stuff. And I like the fact that they released on a YouTube channel on a regular basis behind the scenes and progress and content and how they made it. And the fact that they used commercial grade equipment to do all the motion capture. They didn't rent or buy the, the biggest Hollywood studios or the gear that the bigger studios would use, or the bigger companies would use to do motion capture. They kind of did it on a really cheap and lower budget. And it turned out great. I think it was a, an amazing achievement and an amazing landmark to show game developers that you can make a really good looking, well motion captured game with really good acting and facial capture and dialogue without having to spend billions to make the game. Now, uh, yes, it is kind of a short game and it is story driven, but it is very, very well animated. The character models look good. The environments look good. Senua's motion capture and her facial capture was all really well done. And due to the fact that this was around the same time as some leading developer studios games that were released that were really subpar as far as the animation, the story, the, the look and the feel. It was an amazing, an amazing thing to see that, yes, we still can do this. And I also like the fact that they didn't rush the development. They took their time with this. And it shows. It really did show that if you put time and energy into a game, it can look really, really good. So that's the first positive I wanted to make was how good and how well animated it was. The next positive that I have is the combat. The combat was really, really good. It was a little bit repetitive. I think there's really only like four things that you can do. There's like dodge. There is like a kick or like a shoulder bump to try to like throw enemies off balance or break shields. There's a strong attack and a fast attack. But it was the combination of using those at the right time and knowing when to use them. And there was a charge attack and then you had the mirror. There wasn't a lot of combos. There wasn't a lot of... There really was only the sword. There wasn't like a lot of different other weapons. But the, combi the, the combat felt really good. It felt solid. It wasn't weak. It wasn't flowery. It wasn't effects driven. It wasn't combo bashing. It was... It wasn't... It also wasn't a lot of button prompts. It wasn't a lot of action prompts. Like you had to hit a button when an enemy was swinging at the right time. It, I mean, there was the dodge, but it wasn't like there was a button that would just be flashing on the screen. You had to actually learn how to fight as Sinoa. And at the beginning of the game, I was getting my ass handed to me a lot. But as it went on, I got better and better at it. And it wasn't like it was constantly telling me and reminding me, hey, hit this button to do this. It, you just learned how to do it. And it was simple. It was simple and it was effective. So that was another thing that I really, really liked was the combat. The enemies, there's not that much diversity in the enemies. It may feel a little repetitious, but it always felt solid. It always felt good to, it felt like the swords and the, the attacks and the, the, kicks and the dodges had weight. 
it felt like there was a little bit more realism to it rather than high flying kicks and high flying punches that happens a lot in games where the characters animations the characters movements just don't make any sense they're just they're just extra kicks and extra spins for no reason this it was if she was going to swipe she was going to swipe she wasn't going to do this big spinning flailing before the actual attack she just attacked and that felt really good to have a more basic a more simple combat in a game also it didn't really feel like even though these guys were bigger than you and she does get kicked around a lot she does get her ass handed to her a lot by these nine foot dudes it did feel like she did stand a chance if she did land really good attacks and did dodge so it wasn't unfair on either side. It felt like with strategy and combat and training and practice, you could defeat these guys with just a sword. And it, that felt good. The third positive is the voice acting. The voice acting was really good. Now, I have never heard of any of these people. I have no idea what else they've done. I know they're really good actors. I know they probably do have history, probably in theater or in commercials or on stage. I don't, I, I can't recognize any of their faces. I don't think I've seen them anywhere. Probably someone could point out and go, oh, that's them. I'd be like, oh, that's who that is. But I can't remember any of them. As opposed to a lot of, mo not movies, but f games nowadays that are trying to be a little bit more cinematic. They'll actually hire big actors. And sometimes, regardless of whether you hire big actors, famous people or not, sometimes the performance just tanks. It's just not that good. It's not believable. You don't care. The The dialogue is poorly written. That was not the case with Senua. That was not the case with Hellblade. It was very much the dialogue felt believable. Now, there was some times when the dialogue really kind of went on too long. You really didn't need that much information. A lot of the the myths and the stories that you get throughout the game, a lot of that's not necessary. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice scenery piece. And it's a nice element to the game, but it's not necessary. You could do without it. Senoa, all of her lines, really, really solid, really, really good. It really felt like she was sad and depressed. Again, it did seem like there was a lot of extra lines that weren't necessary, but ultimately the delivery was really, really good. This, my second favorite voice in the entire thing is the father. The father in it, all of his lines are really, really intimidating, are all really, really good. A really, really well done dialogue. It's, it's not over the top. It's not poorly done. It's just right there and it's intimidating and creepy with its delivery. It's not yelling. It's not screaming. It's just the way what he's saying is really, really creepy. And that was a really, really good element. My fourth major positive. Now, it's not to say that that's all the positives that I have, but these are the four major positives that I really want to insinuate. So the fourth major positive is the music. The music is gorgeous in this. It is amazing. I don't know who did it. I don't know who orchestrated it. I don't know who wrote the music, but it is all beautifully, beautifully done. It has this Celtic old feel to it and it has this orchestra that swells when it gets all dramatic it has a choir screaming and singing in the background it is just so gorgeous and it really helps in the scenery when there's not a lot going on you're still enjoying the experience even if you're just walking from one point to the next because the music is great to listen to it's really really good now on to the negatives so the negatives don't really break the game. They don't really ruin the experience necessarily. A lot of these are things that you can avoid. I mean, you can overlook, but they have to be mentioned. There's a couple of these that I did kind of gripe about during my Let's Play. So let's get to them. So the first negative is kind of the biggest one, and that is that there wasn't a lot to do in the game. There wasn't really anything to find there wasn't anything to journey to i mean the the levels are all really big really expansive and have a lot of interesting nooks and crannies and 
seem like there would be a lot of secret passages and secret areas, but there's nothing there. Really, the only thing to find that's off the beaten path are these totems or whatever that have the little myths and stories told to you by, I think he's like your uncle or something like that, or some storyteller. I don't remember who he was. But that's really the only other thing to do. There's no real achievements in this. There's nothing to really play the game again for. There's nothing... If you played from beginning to end, it takes you on a linear path and you're not going to miss anything. So it's not like you're going to get to the end and you're going to be like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Let's play the game again to figure out what happened. That's not the case. You're going to get the idea and you're going to get it and you're going to understand it and there's going to be no reason to play it again. The, the combat isn't so exciting that you'd want to play it again. With some first-person shooters or some third-person shooters, there's an excitement in the combat. There's maybe some new stuff that you can learn, some new stuff that you can do that you could improve on or go back through and change up your play style or whatever. No, you go through this, it's going to be the exact same experience for everyone from beginning to end. Which, again, doesn't really break the game, but it is very important to mention because I think there could have been more, more to this game. There could have been some things to find, some things to, even if they're just little hidden secrets, maybe some, some achievements, something that you can do that, you know, you could go back through and play the whole thing again just to get all of them. I don't know. The fact that there isn't a lot to do in the game has to do with the fact that it was a small studio putting it together and they didn't have a large budget. So the game's relatively short and they focus more on the story than extra details in the levels or extra things to achieve or separate paths. There's And the combat, they really just focused on the story. Second negative would probably be the fact that there are a lot of really interesting mechanics in the game that don't show up ever again. They don't come back into play. They don't become a part of the, the regular game. There's a lot of puzzles that you have to solve using different mechanics, but then after you've basically done that, it never comes up again. There's a couple of those that I really wish were a constant thing that maybe you had to do during combat. Like maybe there's got enemies constantly coming after you and you have to quickly solve the puzzle in order to escape. Otherwise, they're completely endless, but there was never anything like that. I, I would have liked for there to bend something that was maybe like a flashback or a callback to earlier puzzles, but it, that just never happened. My third real negative is going to be the fact that the enemies, there's not a lot of variety. Now, I said that earlier, and that was kind of a, I kind of mentioned it earlier in one of the positives, but there aren't a lot of enemies in this, and it is kind of a negative. Because ultimately, you really just have maybe a handful of enemies. So there's not a lot to learn as far as different means of combat. Also, you get really, really strong and very, very powerful at the end to the point that big bosses at the beginning become regular minions easily dispatched at the end. There's a whole bunch of the giant, like, 12-foot dudes that I was kicking ass on alongside other enemies. And I would have kind of liked for some of that challenge to stay. Yes, you still have to dodge them, but now your sword can cut through them really easily. And the fact that you can slow down time with the mirror gives you the ability to just basically chain attack people, which is nice, but kind of takes away from some of the challenge. Yes, there's a whole bunch of them at the end, like at the very, very end. But again, it's kind of... Well, I've already defeated thousands of these guys, so I don't... Where's the challenge now? And the fourth negative is kind of a spoiler. So if you don't want any spoilers, because I've been really, really loose on the spoilers as of so far, but if you don't want any spoilers and you're wanting to play the game, which I do recommend, because it is a good game, and you didn't watch my Let's Play and you, you want to see the story, please, by all means, go play it. But if you are okay with spoilers... Here we go. So, spoiler warning. At the very, very end, it's kind of confusing as to what happens. It's not really clear. So, Senua dies, 
I guess. She gets run through with her own sword. And then her boyfriend or husband or fiancé is laid to rest by Hela. But then when the camera pans back up, Senna was alive and Hela was killed. And there's no explanation to that. Which is fine if that was the, what the game was about. If the game was all about a twist at the end. But this wasn't a game that was about that kind of twist at the end. The only twist that really comes up in the game that's a twist that kind of explains, that, that kind of pl pays off from earlier parts of the game is the deep demon-like voice throughout the game. That kind of male booming demon-like voice, which I thought was Hell or Loki or something like that. Come to find out, that's her father. That's her father just talking to her in her head. Which is not clear if that's actually him or if that's just her schizophrenia. Again, there's a lot of questions like that unanswered. So the Hella twist at the end doesn't make any sense. It's not something that really fits in with everything that we had basically experienced up to this point. It would have been totally fine if Hella, I mean, if Hella killed Senua. To me, I think it would have been totally fine. I mean, that's basically what we were expecting. It is called Senua's Sacrifice. So it would have made sense. But for Hela to die and Senua to live, but not see how that happened, is really confusing. It's very confusing. So that's probably a, not really a big negative, but it did leave me with more questions that I would have wanted at the very end of the game. They did set it up for a sequel. And I could see that they wanted to. I mean, this game and this developer and this group and this team that put it together deserves a sequel. But I don't think that Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice should have been a franchise. I don't think that it should have been an ongoing thing. What it should have been would have been a giant epic with a, an emotional ending, which we almost got, but then I feel like at the last minute, they really wanted to continue doing this later and did the switch with Hela and Senua. I don't know, but it's just kind of a thing that I, I didn't like it. I didn't like that ending. Not saying that it's bad, I just personally didn't like it. So those are my four positives and those are my four negatives. Overall, I would give this game probably a four and a half stars out of five. It's really close to perfect. It's really, really close. It has a great, strong female protagonist who isn't just some superhuman. She gets emotionally and physically tormented throughout the game. It has a great environment, great music, great acting, great voice acting, the effects and the scenery and all this is all really, really good. And the fact that it was a small, smaller team than what you would normally expect from a game this size was really, really good to see. It was a breath of fresh air to actually see a small team do something, especially on the mocap level, that most big AAA developers can't do for some weird reason. So anyway, if you haven't played the game and you want to play the game, I highly recommend it. If you don't need to now because you've already seen me play it and you also saw my review and listened to the spoilers, that's totally fine. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you disagree with any of my points, leave those down in the comment section below. If you'd like to see any other reviews or any other games played, leave that in the comment section as well. And if you're new, subscribe. And until next time, peace. Peace.